Emilio, did you see that? He just hammered it. Big fish too, look at that. Oh, oh, ho, ho, ho. look at that. Welcome everybody to the New Fly Fisher. I'm your host, Colin McEwen. I'm at Three Rivers Lodge in Labrador, one of the most beautiful places in the world. And I'm so excited because joining me is Tom Rosenbauer. And somebody that's even more special than Tom Rosenbauer are the big, beautiful brook trout wild brook trout up to seven eight pounds and we're going to be getting them on top water flies tom's going to be talking about techniques and the ways to catch them it's going to be an absolutely fabulous show i know you're going to love it stay with us Ooh, that's a nice sized fish i will catch these all day that is what you're in for on this episode The New Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to the support of Newfoundland and Labrador Outfitters Association, Orvis Fly Fishing, Rio Products, Superfly, fly fishing made easy. For Tom and I, our adventure began in Labrador City. After spending a night at a local motel, in the morning we boarded a float plane to fly approximately 150 miles northeast to Three Rivers Lodge. The lodge is located on Crossroads Lake, which is part of the Woods River system. These waters can only be accessed by flying. This vast river, which is over a hundred miles long and holds over a dozen brawling rapids, contains world-class fishing and is considered by many as one of the best brook trout fisheries in Canada. It is known for not only the size of brookies, but also for the quantity you can catch each day. On top of that, you can find yourself fishing for lake trout, whitefish, and also northern pike. The lodge also offers flyouts for Arctic char and landlocked salmon. While enjoying the many fishing opportunities this area has to offer, you can also expect to see all sorts of wildlife, ranging from moose to eagles. All of this while surrounded by the breathtaking landscapes of Labrador. These are some of the reasons why this area is considered a bucket list destination by most anglers. After arriving at the lodge, we settled into our rooms and got our gear unpacked. We were warmed with coffee and a hearty breakfast before getting into our waders and heading out on the river. Tom has never caught a brook trout over 15 inches and is very excited to start wading these waters on the hunt for some big brookies. Our local guide, Brady Slade, took us to the first run of the trip. This run of tumbling water, boulders and pools is called the Lower Ricks. We had a nice walk through the woods with Brady. We're at Lower Ricks. So we're here in uh, what people would call pocket water or a boulder garden. Lots of big rocks, lots of swirls, lots of different currents and um, we don't know what the fish are gonna take. I'm gonna start with a dry dropper with a relatively large dry and a nymph, just because uh, I don't know what's going on. I've never fished here before, and that's a good way to start. I think before I came to Labrador, my biggest brook trout was 15 inches. My very first Labrador brook trout just 
just blew me away. It was a small fish for here. It was maybe three pounds. It was just floored by the size and the color of that fish. When I first came to Labrador in, um, God, I mean, sometime in the mid 90s, it was, well, I came up here for the big brook trout. Yeah, everybody hears about the big brook trout. It's one of the wildest, emptiest, prettiest places I've ever been. At this point, I think this is my ninth or 10th trip here. And at this point, the people are my friends, I'm comfortable here, and it's arguably the best brook trout fishing in the world. Simple as that. Watching brook trout smash mice patterns on the surface is every fly angler's dream and one of the big draws of Labrador. Whoa, wow. Oh my God. Woo! It doesn't happen every day, but when the conditions are right, it is the best brook trout fishing that you can probably experience. Today we woke up to the beautiful sight of the morning mist lifting from the lake in front of the lodge. After a hot coffee and delicious breakfast, we quickly got dressed into our fishing gear and boarded a float plane to head to a new river. Tom and I both started by casting mice patterns to see if we could trigger a strike from a brook trout. What happened next is something Tom will always remember. We're here in a different river today. It's at the outlet of a lake, and um, we don't know much about it. And uh, it's fairly wide. You can see it's wide and shallower here. There's a central current thread going through here where the trout probably are, and not knowing any, anything else, we're gonna try a mouse. Oh, yeah! Woo! So this is the biggest brook trout of my life. I can tell you that for sure, because I've never caught one over 15 inches before. Wow. Oh my God. Look at that color. Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. Okay, wow. Oh my God. <laughs> Look at those colors. Nice. Ah. Wow, what a beautiful fish. My God. Oh, oh, that was a big fish. So I did something really stupid there. I just broke off a fish. And uh, what happened was, had caught a nice fish, a couple casts before, hooked another fish, put a little pressure on it, and the tippet snapped in the middle of the tippet. They're big fish, there's a lot of rocks, and they're pretty abrasive. I wasn't smart enough to check my leader after that fish. And you, what you wanna do is after you catch a big fish, look at your knot, and then look at your leader, look for signs of abrasion, make sure that your leader is still sound. Well, we, we pretty much run the gamut here. We've caught fish on mice, We've caught fish on dry flies. We caught one little landlocked salmon on a nymph. And so all that's left is a streamer. So I'm gonna try a uh, conehead muddler. There's a hit. There, 
there's a hit. Well, that didn't take long with the streamer. Nice fish. Took it right about at our feet. Hit it a couple times and uh, came back for it. These wilderness brook trout are, are uh, not the sharpest tool in the shed. So, uh, you know, <laughs> they're, uh, they're pretty aggressive, but they sure are pretty and big. <laughs> oh, passed you by there. That's a decent fish. Today was unlike any day we've ever experienced while brook trout fishing. As we continued to work our way down the run, we had a surreal number of brook trout slashing and exploding on our mouse patterns on the surface. That was just the most explosive take came clear out of the water on it. I mean, it's everything I love about brook trout fishing here in Labrador. Besides the size and the power is the absolutely crushing takes these big brook trout have on these mice. Oh, look at this. Oh, oh I got to get his head up. Oh, good job. Oh, this thing is absolutely gorgeous. Oh, look at that. Absolutely stunning fish. Look at the orange. Oh. Off it swims back into the pool. Wow, this is so much fun. I can't even tell you. And to catch these type of fish, or every one of them looks like something spectacular out of a painting. The next few hours of fishing would be considered brook trout heaven by any angler. <laughs> Big, another male looks like. Male, what do you think? Is that a male? Yeah, I think it's male. Well, by that color. Looks like you have a good girl, too. Yeah. Okay, coming over to you. Wow. Yeah, that's a good one. Wow. Now that fish was right in front of us here. And every one of these fish is taking the mouse on the paws. So um, you know, I've started to slow down my retrieve and let it sit there and the fish have come up and almost sipped it like a mayfly. They, they haven't been explosive strikes that you normally think of for a mouse. It's been, they've been very subtle and you just see the head come up and the mouse is gone. Wow. strike. Wow. Whoa. Whoa. Wow. Oh my God. Woo. That is amazing. <laughs> What an outstanding day we've just had. We cannot wait to see what the rest of this trip will bring.
Another incredible day has come to Labrador and Three Rivers Lodge. After a hearty breakfast and numerous cups of hot coffee, we embark on another adventure on the Woods River system. We boarded the float plane and headed to another area, which is known as Indian Rapids. After carefully examining the run, Tom tells us about how he plans to work the area to figure out where the brook trout are holding. So we're in a new river today. I purposely didn't ask Brady where the fish are gonna be. I wanted to see what we can find out. So we're at a nice, good flowing riffle here. Um, I don't know how deep it is. The fish are generally gonna be in deeper pockets. So I'm gonna assume that there's a deep pocket below this riffle, and then when it flattens out, and I'm just gonna work through it first with a mouse. Here we know a mouse will work and it's a good searching pattern and you can actually see the fish roll on it when they're interested. So we'll start with a mouse and then we'll take it from there. Uh, the fish could be in shallow, I don't wanna spook them. And I don't even know how deep it is out there so I'll gradually wade out, see how deep it gets, see if I can find a little bit deeper spot where the trout might be holding. Once I get closer to those deeper spots, I should be able to spot them, but we'll see. Oh yeah! Woo! Trying to keep side pressure on the fish because I don't want them to be hanging directly downstream if I can. That's when that hook pulls out. So I'm trying to, even though I'm leading them over in a little bit faster water, it's really not that fast. And probably I should, even though this fish didn't take a run, I'm gonna get my line in here just to get it away from the net. And this is what you don't want, is a fish directly downstream of you and you pulling straight up. You wanna try to get that rod to the side so that you're not pulling them straight upstream. Ideally, I'd wanna get downstream of this fish, but I don't wanna wade through this water and, um, and spook other fish that might be in there. Nice female brook trout. Oh, wow. <laughs> Woo. That's bigger fish than I thought. Yeah. Very, very nice fish. And in the water. Off she goes. Good job, time buddy. Thank you, man. Well done. So it's one thing to know how to read the water, but you have to temper that with local knowledge and the conditions. So in the spot I'm standing in now, or the, the water I'm fishing, I would look at that slow foam line over against those alders. It's a nice current there. You can see the bubbles, so you know the food is drifting down there. But all the hits I've gotten have been out in this heavier water just below where I'm standing. I literally just put this fly on. I've been using a streamer, and I just put a gurgler on, and oh, just hammered. First cast, oh, lost him. Uh, that's barbless, but you know something? It's just so much fun. These gurglers, the mice, they're just getting hammered by these big brook trout. They love a big piece of meat on the surface. Uh, gotta cast out and get another one. Big fish. Oh. Oh, look at that power. Oh, it's coming at me real and fast. It's using this current and this five weight rod. I've got both a five and a six here, and they're perfect for this place. Beautiful colors. This is where you need to have really good leader. And I'm using. 10 pound, uh, 1x liter, K 
Okay, and getting his head up, getting his head up. Yeah. The size of that brook shirt, it's going in that. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Okay. Let me get my fly out here. It's barbus, so it should pop right out. There it is. Comes out. Drop that. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful brook trout. And colors. Incredible colors in the fins. It's absolutely insane how aggressive these brook trout can be. For the remainder of the day, we continued to fish using mice patterns. Every few casts, a fish would explode on the surface and engulf our fly. This was another remarkable day of fishing and something every angler should experience in their life. Like all outstanding days, they go by quickly. Soon we're back at the lodge, exchanging stories of the great fishing while taking in yet another beautiful sunset. Tomorrow, we embark on another wild and unique fishing adventure. The weather is supposed to be overcast and rainy. Perfect for casting streamers for aggressive lake trout. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Took that smelt pattern I just changed to. It's a rainy day here at Three Rivers Lodge. We've decided to take it slow this morning, relax on the porch, watch the rain, and chat with the other lodge guests. After getting out on the water and doing a little exploring, it didn't take long for our guide, Brady, to help us locate the lake trout. Unbelievably, the Lakers were in three to eight feet of water, attacking bait fish in anything they could eat. Using streamers and eight weight rods, Tom and I experienced some absolutely wild action over the next few hours. In fact, in that six hour or so period, we successfully landed and released 25 lake trout. Oh, got him, got him, oh yeah. Here I was just, the last bit I just saw the sink tip. Oh, look at that. Hang on, he's not quite ready yet. These, I'll tell you, both Tom and, my, and I are using these. I'm using a nine, Tom's using an eight, and they are getting a workout. Whew, look at that. Beautiful little one. Like that, in a second. He'll let me know he's already kicking. And there he goes. Oh, that's a good fish. Oh, strong. Look at the power of these lake trout. Well, while I'm fighting this fish, I just want to say what an incredible week we've had. Uh, Brady, you've been fantastic. And all the people at Three Rivers Lodge, they're just so much fun. They've made this week fantastic for both Tom and I. And of course, Tom, thank you very much for being in the show. Colin, thank you for inviting me. It has been a real pleasure. Look at that fish. That's it's a, a big nice one. one. That's a great way to end the day. Whoa. And this will give us number 13 for the baker's dozen. And we're no, not that's done. 14. Well, it's 14, Tom, but I don't know. I'm not going to count that little one. They got to be over six, seven pounds to make them real. Isn't that terrible? Terrible problem. Okay, got his head up. Got his head up. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Go ahead there, Brady, if you can get him. I got to set up. Oh, he's not letting me get him in. Oh, ho, ho, ho. look at that. Well, listen, folks, I'm gonna let this fish go. We've had a fantastic week here at Three Rivers Lodge. Thank you for watching. And if you wanna see more of the show, more tips, techniques, and lots of stuff with Tom Rosenbauer, go to our YouTube channel, The New Fly Fisher, or go and see us on the World Wide Web at thenewflyfisher.com. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the water. Okay, let's get him in. Look at that beautiful fish. Look at the colors. Take him, let me put him in. Oh, he's already ready to go. Ooh. 
Three feet of water, four feet of water. The New Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to the support of Newfoundland and Labrador Outfitters Association, Orvis Fly Fishing, Rio Products, Superfly, fly fishing made easy.